We told ourselves the story of space began in 1957 with a signal from a metal sphere drifting overhead. But long before Sputnik, the sky blinked. On photographic plates, decades old and nearly forgotten, brief flashes appear, lights that weren't supposed to be there. They vanish in minutes, align with nuclear detonations. They shouldn't exist, and yet they do. Now, as 3i Atlas slips behind the sun, unreachable and unseen, some say it pulses in patterns, that its rhythm means something, that it answers something old, something we missed, patterns, pulses, and a sky that was never truly ours. If the past blinked and the present drifts silently into light, what do we call the space in between? Today, we follow the flicker, even if it fades before we understand it. The oldest evidence doesn't come from satellites or spectrometers. It comes from glass, plates once used to capture the night sky, frame by frame, exposure by exposure, as if we could freeze the stars long enough to study their behavior. For decades, they were stored, cataloged, forgotten. But when astronomer Beatrice Villaroel and her team returned to those archives, they weren't looking for constellations or galaxies. They were looking for something that wasn't supposed to be there, and they found it. Thousands of transients, brief flashes that lit up for minutes, then vanished without a trace, surfaced in their analysis. These weren't comets or satellites. They didn't drift or move like debris. They blinked in and out of existence, like stars with stage fright. But the most disturbing detail wasn't the pattern of light. It was the timing. Many of these flashes coincided with the days of nuclear detonations on Earth, tests that cracked the planet open with radiation and fire. And when cross-referenced with historical reports of unidentified aerial phenomena, the correlation deepened. The transients seemed to cluster around moments when we were loudest, most destructive, most visible. Even stranger, these flashes didn't appear over the night side of the planet. They showed up only when the Earth-facing side was bathed in sunlight. That suggests something reflective, something artificial. Highly polished surfaces, briefly catching the sun as they orbited overhead. Not unlike what we see today, with starlink glints or spent rocket stages. But the dates don't add up. These flashes were recorded before 1957, before Sputnik, before anything human had ever left the atmosphere. So, if they weren't ours, whose were they? The peer-reviewed papers don't make wild claims. They stop short of declaring alien origin or calling them spacecraft, but they confirm the anomaly. They confirm the correlation. And in science, confirmation means the conversation must begin, whether we're ready or not. Because if there were reflective, artificial-like objects circling the Earth before the dawn of our space age. It means someone or something may have reached orbit before us, and whatever left those flashes never stayed long enough to be seen twice. When 3i Atlas entered the solar system, it did so without ceremony. No explosive tale, no theatrical arrival, just a dim speck on long-range telescopes sliding in from the darkness, like a thought you almost didn't notice. It was only the third confirmed interstellar object to ever cross our skies. And yet, something about it felt different, not just in orbit, or speed, or trajectory, but in the way people began to speak about it, whisper about it, as if it wasn't just an object passing through, but a signal, a presence, a messenger. It began, like many mysteries do, with a pattern. Some observers claim that 3i Atlas wasn't just reflecting sunlight, but pulsing, brightening, and dimming in a rhythm that mirrored the Fibonacci sequence. Numbers like 5, 8, and 13 began to appear in discussions, proposed as the intervals between light fluctuations. For those who believe that math is the language of the cosmos, this was electrifying. Fibonacci numbers are everywhere in nature, in shells, in galaxies, in the growth of plants, a universal code some say. So, if 3i Atlas was echoing that sequence, was it accidental or was it intentional? The claim spread quickly. Videos, diagrams, blogs. Some said the object was communicating. Others, that it was following a hyperdimensional path encoded with spiritual meaning. A few linked the timing of its appearance to historical anomalies, even religious prophecies. 
They said it was here to teach us, to warn us, to watch. But here's the problem with stories like this. They're easy to want and hard to verify. In the scientific community, no observatory has officially reported any periodic pulsing from 3i Atlas. No peer-reviewed paper, no photometric curve showing Fibonacci intervals, no hard data, at least none that survives scrutiny. And while David Sarita, a physicist and speaker who brought attention to this claim, proposed a fascinating model involving light, resonance, and symbolic numerology, it remains, at best, a personal interpretation of noisy data, not a measurement, not a confirmation. Because light curves are deceptive, especially from something as distant and volatile as a comet. Objects like 3i Atlas rotate, not smoothly, but irregularly, with jagged, asymmetric surfaces that catch sunlight in unpredictable ways. A bulge of ice, a scar of dust. As it spins, different regions reflect light more or less intensely, and from Earth, that can look like a pulse, especially when the observer already expects to see a pattern. Add to that the interference from Earth's atmosphere, shifting air, scattered sunlight, sensor saturation, and the result is a fluctuating signal, full of noise, full of temptation. Our brains are trained to find order in chaos. It's how we survive. It's also how we misinterpret. In astronomy, this tendency has a name, pareidolia. It's the same impulse that lets us see faces in clouds or creatures on Mars. Applied to numbers, it becomes something even more seductive, numerical pareidolia. When we already believe the Fibonacci sequence means something, we begin to see it everywhere, in the flicker of a star, in the shadow of a graph, in the silence between frames. And yet, that doesn't mean we should ignore the impulse, because every true discovery begins with a suspicion, a question, a pattern that doesn't quite fit. What 3i Atlas has revealed, with certainty, is far more subtle than a coded message. Its orbit is hyperbolic, proof it came from outside the solar system. Its size is massive, significantly larger than Oumuamua or Borisov. And now, it's nearing perihelion, the point closest to the sun, just as it moves into solar conjunction. From Earth, it becomes invisible, lost in glare, hidden in fire. We won't be able to track it for days. And during those days, we'll wonder, what if the pulse was real? What if the pattern mattered? Because even if the Fibonacci rhythm is an illusion, the desire to hear a message is very real. In the absence of clear signals, we invent them. We project meaning onto silence because the alternative, the possibility that the universe is indifferent, feels unbearable. But somewhere between skepticism and faith is the space we inhabit now. A space where data is incomplete, but curiosity persists. And in that space, 3i Atlas continues to drift, mute and magnificent, its surface flashing not with language, but with light. And perhaps that's the only message we're ready to receive. There are points in every orbit where gravity becomes more than just a pull. It becomes an opportunity, a lever, a silent engine. As 3i Atlas approached the sun, it wasn't just following a curved path through space, it was entering a corridor of potential, a region where velocity spikes, where momentum crests, and where even a minor nudge could change the story completely. This is the Oberth window, a theoretical moment when a spacecraft or an object can perform a maneuver with maximum efficiency, gaining more from less. It's the closest thing to a cheat code that celestial mechanics allows. Between October 21st and October 29th, 3i Atlas passed through this critical phase, first vanishing behind the sun during solar conjunction, then reaching perihelion, its closest point to the solar furnace. From Earth, it disappeared into brightness. No telescope could follow its trail. No spectrometer could analyze its light. For days, it moved without witness behind the very star that sustains us. And in that gap, in that observational blackout, questions multiplied. Because if 3i Atlas were more than ice and rock, this would be the moment to act. If it were artificial, this is when it would burn fuel. Adjust course or deploy. Not out of spectacle, but out of precision. The physics of the Oberth effect means that a small push at perihelion translates into a massive shift in energy. A well-timed maneuver here could send probes deeper into the solar system or out of it entirely. And if we weren't looking, if our instruments were blinded by the sun, we wouldn't see it happen. 
That's what Avi Loeb, Harvard astrophysicist and lead voice behind the Galileo project, quietly suggested in his analysis. He doesn't claim certainty. He doesn't cry aliens. In fact, he repeatedly states that 3i Atlas most likely behaves as a natural comet. But still, he lists the oddities, the orbit that aligns too closely with the solar plane, the unexpected brightness profile, the low water content, the unusual polarization of reflected light, a handful of traits that, while not definitive, refuse to fade into background noise. And so he proposed this. If 3i Atlas were a probe, a vessel, or a shell hiding smaller instruments, perihelion would be the time to act. And if we missed it, if it did release something, those fragments might already be moving silently across the solar system, too small to detect, too distant to catch, drifting on new paths we'll only discover long after the fact. But this isn't paranoia, it's preparation. Science isn't just about answers, it's about staying alert when the data goes dark, because sometimes it's in the blind spots that the most important changes occur. Now, as 3i Atlas begins to emerge from the sun's glare, astronomers will turn their instruments back toward it. They'll look for any deviation in its arc, any shift in its brightness curve, any anomaly in its spectral fingerprint. Because if something happened while we weren't watching, now is the time it will start to show. And if nothing changed, then we continue forward with caution, humility, and curiosity. Because the most telling maneuver may not be the one we see, but the one we miss. Maybe we'll never know if the sky blinked at us or simply flickered for no one. Maybe those flashes on century-old glass were nothing but cosmic coincidence, light bouncing off something forgotten or never meant to be noticed. Maybe 3 I Atlas is just a rock, a frozen relic cast out from a distant star, drifting alone, indifferent to our gaze. But even if that's true, it still passed through our sky. It still left questions burning in its wake because the silence it brought wasn't empty. It asked things of us. It asked whether we're really alone in orbit, whether we ever were. It asked why transients would appear when we tested bombs on our own planet, why some objects reflect light in the exact moment we lose sight of them, why patterns emerge just as we begin to search for meaning. And it asked, quietly, coldly, if we're seeing the first signs of a conversation that started before we knew how to speak back. Most of what we'll say about 3i Atlas will be wrong. We'll overreach, we'll speculate, we'll project our hopes, our fears, our loneliness. But some part of what we've seen is real. The object is real, its orbit is real, the timing is real, and the fact that it passed through this system, just barely close enough for us to question, might be all we get. For now, so we watch, we listen, we wait for it to emerge from the sun's shadow and show us whether it stayed the course or veered just enough to whisper back. Because even in silence, there are patterns. And sometimes, patterns are the only language we have. If you're still here, if the unknown calls to you the way it calls to us, consider staying. Subscribe. Leave something behind in the dark. A like. A thought. A sign that you're listening to. The sky isn't ours. It never was. But we're learning, slowly, how to hear what it's been trying to say.